All right, welcome back. This is our second tutorial looking at how Hammer workflow from the first tutorial that we learned is really going to help provide us with a stable work frame uh, to be able to build the worlds that we want. And in this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and add some more mesh work uh, by uh, taking advantage of the uh, techniques that uh, I've picked up over some time and uh, being able to pass them along to you as well. So I'm going to expand these walls. I'm going to select it with the face uh, holding down shift, I'm going to extrude this out. Notice when I hold down shift, as opposed to uh, not holding down shift, if I don't hold down shift, it's just simply going to drag that wall out. Okay, but I want to hold down shift. I actually want to go ahead and create uh, brand new faces here. Look at these nice quads. Um, this is a lot easier to select the face. There's other ways that uh, you can do this. If you want to go ahead, you could select edges and you could pull them out and you can select vertices and pull them out. Uh, but it becomes a lot more difficult. So, for example, if I wanted to select each and every one of these vertices, okay, that also works, and then I could pull this out, uh, but it's honestly faster to just select one face, pull it out, and then uh, if I really want, you could do edges as well, and you can pull out the edges, uh, but uh, workflow and being able to just quickly grab something with a face makes it so much easier. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to expand this out, uh, give this person here a little bit more room I can select both walls and press E and uh, extrude it out do the same ex exact same uh, sorry same exact thing as well and I'm sorry not extrude it out but scale it out and extruding would imply that I'm holding down shift and creating brand new faces but in this case I'm not and so we can see here two rooms that I've expanded out and it made it a little bit different um, let's go ahead and uh, let's give this room right here uh, a little bit uh, more uh, uh, depth. So I'm going to take these walls. Uh, let's just go ahead and bring this out. Uh, select this face. Hold down shift. Let's uh, go ahead and extrude it. And uh, let's, uh, let's make it a little bit deeper. So let's give this a nice deep chasm. And, and notice by holding down shift, I've already created uh, part of this uh, mesh the faces that I need. I don't need any unnecessary faces. I'm not using blocks to build this. And as a result, um, also Viz is going to take me a lot more later. All right. Um, now I want to go ahead and I, I want to actually get rid of this 3D grid because it's starting to get in my way. So map, uh, close off 3D grid. And then uh, I want to go ahead and uh, let's, I don't want that. I do want to open up my asset browser. So open floating window. Asset Browser, click on Materials. Uh, I want to just uh, try to switch up the coloring and contrast it. So typing in Dev, got an orange one. Notice I'm trying to keep this also um, as free as uh, I can from Half-Life Alex Assets, since I know some of you are using SteamVR and Dota in preparation for Sandbox. So I am using the uh, Half-Life Alex version of uh, Hammer, uh, which is the most up-to-date one uh, besides what Sandbox has to offer. I highly recommend you use that one as well. All right, um, so <clears throat> I want to go ahead and actually create a quad here. Uh, and so in creating a quad, press Shift B. I'm going to create here the first of my stair steps. Uh, I'm going to drag this quad out. Now, if you want to know a, a really good way to understand uh, the average dimension of stairs, uh, we're going to go uh, 8 by 12. Okay, so 8 up, uh, we're going to go 12 across. Uh, so I'm going to reposition this. Notice I can tell the measurements by pointing. Uh, if I select the face, it'll tell you what the uh, width is and the length is. Oh, I just want this edge, though. Holding down Shift, I'm going to drag it down so that it's at my perfect length. Okay, now here's where I want to try to ease my workflow. I'm going to actually shift views. I'm going to press between F2, F3, and F4. You can go to the views you want. This is what I want. All right. Uh, I can see this is my stair object. If I go back and press F5, you can see that my stairs are selected. Okay. And uh, I'm going to hold down Shift. I'm going to, with my Translate uh, tool, drag a new set. And here's what I've done, is I've created a nice set of stairs. And check this out. Press Shift and G. And it's going to repeat the same action that you just did. So Shift G, Shift G, Shift G. Beautiful stairs coming down. And now I don't have any back faces. If I'm coming from back here, I don't even see any faces. I'm doing an excellent job, right? The player is not going to see that. Now, later on, to save light map spacing, okay, we'll go over how Viz is going to affect this. And we'll actually save some light maps by uh, chopping this up. But that's for another time. 
Um, so far, this is working out good. Uh, let's go ahead and let's create a uh, block. Uh, let's create some pillars. So uh, let's see here. We'll go 16 by 16. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually let's change the grid back to 8. So as soon as we can, even though I went to a grid of 4 for the stairs, that's fine. Try to stay on 8. Try to stay on 16 if possible. It's going to make your rooms and everything line up nice and easy. Okay, now uh, the one thing about this is I have unnecessary faces. So I'm going to delete these faces. You know, I could have made this uh, pillar using quads. Uh, I could have used it making a block, but I went ahead and did it this way. But so with these uh, pillars and the faces deleted, I'm going to just make sure I copy it, pull it to the other side, and then I'm going to select these, hold down shift, make another copy. And, uh, I've got myself a room shaping up to be a little bit more uh, interesting than just a bland square door. Okay, now uh, let's finish this off. I'm going to bevel these, increase the grid size. Let's increase it to 32. Uh, selecting this edge, press F. And right, I'm going to do the same to this side. Okay, now uh, this looks really good. And now I do want to make sure that I note though, in, in doing so, I've actually created an end gone. I've got an end gone right here. I've got five sides. Same with this face. Same with this face. Ooh, what is happening over here and over here as well? Wow, actually, this is one crazy end gone. Uh, so I want to go ahead and actually undo that. Uh, control Z a few times. And uh, let's get back to where we were at before we made these crazy, crazy changes. All right. Uh, instead of uh, beveling it at 32, if we go down to 16, what you'll find is that now, instead of this uh, being all the way down here and creating the craziest end gone, it's a lot more reasonable. Okay, and uh, this end gone that we have on each of these faces, these four end gones, we're going to quickly, quickly fix this. Select those faces. I'm going to press Shift X <clears throat> in this clipping tool. I'm going to keep both sides. I'm going to go ahead and make a cut right across here, which if you look is going to be applied to all the faces that I select. <clears throat> okay, think of this clipping tool as like a giant saw that goes through the entire map. <clears throat> and now I'm going to be able to make nice and neat end gons. Press enter. Look at these faces. Every single one of them uh, is going to allow me to also manipulate it later a, a lot easier. All right. Uh, so I've uh, gone ahead and uh, spruced up this room just a little bit and uh, this room is going to be what we tackle in our next tutorial all right hopefully you guys enjoyed this like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you in crash course number three